Bishop Long has epitomized to us what an authority figure should be about. He's surrounded both by a covering as a father, spiritual father, who has come to encourage him, and his sons have come and daughters have come to encourage him. The Bible says that a, a great man should be in authority and under authority. So he has exemplified that in such an integrous way. You are blessed to have him as your pastor. Whenever you see something, somebody as great as he is in his own rights, doesn't have to submit to anybody, doesn't have to help anybody do anything. He's a, he's a powerhouse, he's a wrecking crew in his own right. And then to submit to somebody and then to serve somebody else, he teaches by example. I saw, I saw a sign on the back of a, of a car one day, changed my life before my mother died. It said, you're teaching your children how to treat you by how you treat your parents. I ran home, I just kissed my mother. <laughs> he should reap some wonderful sons because he has become a wonderful son to me. Thank you. Thank you. To the Word of God, the book of Acts, chapter number eight. I'm going to read from the first verse, but I want you to read from the fifth verse to the twelfth verse in concert. So I'm going to read the first four verses to you, and then you're going to read five through twelve to me. Are you ready? And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time there, were, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and howling men and women committed them to prison. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere is this interesting? Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. You pick it up at five. Then Philip went down. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and the signs which were done. Now, now capture this, capture this, because Simon has his city all tied up, He's got it all tied up. There was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because that of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. 
Then Simon himself believed. Good God Almighty. Preach until the witch believes. They lived to see the one who had held them captive for years bow his knee and confess that Jesus was Lord to the glory of God. All because one man came into that city and turned that city upside down. Today I want to preach from this subject, the spell breaker. The spell breaker. And I want you to look at somebody next to you. Look them eyeball to eyeball. And say, neighbor, neighbor. The, spell the spell is broken, broken. over your life. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. My God, my God, my God. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to address this august body of believers who have assembled in this house not even knowing exactly what to expect, but they came into the house of God to worship and to magnify you. Little did they know that they had a date with destiny today and that before they leave here, strongholds and struggles will be pulverized up under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Father, I give every demon, every witch, every soothsayer, every root worker notice. You got 60 seconds to clear the building. I feel a breakthrough about to hit this house from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Break every bondage, every curse, every hex, every spell, every demonic influence that has ever sabotaged the destiny of every daughter and every son in this house. In the name of Jesus, bondages over ministries, over businesses, over companies, over families, over mothers and daughters and fathers and sons and churches and cities, we come against it now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God, have your way in this house. I thank you for what you're about to do. Shake this house. Shake it like it's a rug. Shake it like it's a garment. Pulverize it. Great God that you are. I thank you for what I feel right now. Have your way in this house. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Most High God. You know, many times when we read the book of Acts, what, what the King James Version refers to as the Acts of the Apostles, um, really King James, while he might have been fairly astute at, at translating the language, seemed not to really understand the synergy of this particular book itself. This book is, as it relates to New Testament theology, actually the contemporary book of the book of Genesis because it begins with the book of Acts and understanding the outpouring and the magnitude of the Holy Spirit upon the church through the birth canal of what happens in Acts chapter 2 the church is birthed the water breaks and the church emerges into a new dimension of thought and influence uh, a dimension that King James refers to as the Acts of the Apostles but if read carefully one would begin to understand that what we are actually seeing is the Acts of God it really wasn't the acts of the apostles. The apostles were recipients of the acts of God for suddenly there came a sound from heaven, not from a preacher, not from an orator, not from a university, not from a thinker, not from a board of presbyters, but there came a sound from heaven. Too many churches today are controlled by the sound of a board and the sound of a person and the sound of an individual. But what really causes great ministry to emerge in the kingdom of God is when there is a sound from heaven and whenever there is such a sound from heaven that would come into any city or any family or any group of people the enemy is pulverized by the power of that experience that's why the enemy hates for us to have a real God encounter because we have a real encounter with God it will change our lives in a definite and profound way 
He doesn't mind us having an experience with church. He doesn't mind you dressing up on Sunday morning and coming to church, perhaps because it is the most popular church to come to, or perhaps because your girlfriend attends this church, or perhaps you've heard that there are lovely women in this church. People come to church for a lot of reasons. All of them didn't come this morning because they're seeking God. And you're naive if you think that this great body of believers at all have gathered to worship God. Some have gathered seeking business opportunities, and, and some have gathered because there are lovely women in this church, and some have gathered because it's a good place to pick up men, and some have gathered because they're trying to meet somebody and they need some social inspiration. People come for a lot of reasons, but the vast majority of us have come because we are seeking a move and an expression of God. Oh, yes. And, and what happens in this process, the enemy tries to pollute any move of God with such an infusion of carnality that we slip beneath the purpose that God has predestined for the move to consist of. He wants a pollution to come through carnality, and often it comes even through leadership. Such was the time in the book of Acts, for God sent a legitimate move uh, from his spirit in the second chapter of Acts, a legitimate move, move of God so strong and so prevailing that even at the risk of being beheaded, skinned alive, and sawn asunder, they were faithful to that move of God. The challenge was, anytime God moves in a mighty way, we have a tendency to build a monument around a movement, and we become entrenched in religious dogma, and we have a tendency to want to pitch a tent around what God did rather than to follow God as he moves. So what begins to happen as you watch the attitude of the apostles in the book of Acts, they kept coming back to Jerusalem because they kept trying to recreate an experience in their lives for which it should have been a launching pad rather than a monument, an organization, a doctrine, or an organizational ecclesiastical discourse. And what people often do is they keep coming back to where God was, trying to get God to do what he did before because they think that the power is in the geographical location rather than the relationship with God. And anytime we become too hooked and attached to a dogma, to a creed, to a denomination, to an influence of where God has been, God often has to send a shaking in our lives to shake us out of tradition because tradition makes the word of God of no effect. There are some people that choose their churches because their grandmother used to bake sweet potato pies for that church. And some people are in that church because their great-grandfather laid the cornerstone in that church. And great-grandpa's been dead for years, but they're still going to where great-grandpa was out of loyalty to a family's disposition about theology or denomination. Some people go into a church looking for that denomination in that city rather than looking for a move of God because they are stuck to a system. They're married to an idea of God or as the Bible says, they have a form of godliness denying the power thereof. And many times God has to shake you loose. So as the apostles kept coming back to Jerusalem and the council began to meet at Jerusalem to discuss who was an authentic apostle and who was not and what was going to be a great move of God and what was not, persecution began to break out in Jerusalem. Saul began to wreak havoc in the church and to attack the Christians to make them shake out of their religious system. I don't know whether you can relate to this or not, but most of the time in my life, if I didn't obey God quickly, God would send persecution to shake me out of my, my tendency that I have. I, you see, I'm a loyalist. I'm a loyalist. I'm very, very loyal. If I ever connect to you, I'm connected to you. If I'm your friend, I'm your friend. I mean, you my brother. You through thick and thin, come hell and high water, no canoe, no rowboat, and no swimming trunks. I'm still in the water with you trying to get you out. I will hang in there. And people like that are very vulnerable to becoming stoic and stayed and committed to a dead thing that doesn't work and sometimes God has to send persecution to shake you out of something so that you can go on to what God has for you persecution arose in Jerusalem and there was a great shaking but you must understand that every shaking is not bad many shakings are good many times we receive a direction through persecution 
Mm. If I don't say anything else, I'd preach right there. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, many times the, the people who persecute us without them even knowing it are the agents of the Lord. God uses the persecution that they sent against us to direct us into his next move. Like Joseph's brothers, I realized that they meant it for evil, but God made it good. I wish I had a witness. Occasionally you'll lose a job and cry about it today, but a year from now you'll be glad they fired you because, because God will use that door slamming to make you look in another direction and open up a door that blesses the next 20 years of your life. Some of you need to go to your ex-husband and thank him for leaving you because if he had not left you, you wouldn't have walked into what you have right now. Some of you brothers need to walk up to that old girlfriend and say, I just want to thank you for breaking my heart. Because when you broke my heart, you opened up a door for me to meet a real woman. <laughs> Let the church say amen persecution then becomes a good thing. It shook Philip out of his religious dogma and out of all of these board meetings and business meeting and religious dogma into a place where God could use him for his glory. For you see, Philip was sent down to Samaria on the wings of persecution and adversity. And it doesn't matter who God uses to usher you into your next move as long as you make it into that great move of God. And the Bible said, then Philip went down to Samaria. Somebody say then. <laughs> yeah, then Philip went down. After all hell broke loose in Jerusalem, it forced Philip to go down into Samaria. And I want to just pause here and take a moment and tell you that some of the things you're crying about now, you're going to be shouting about later. Mm -hmm. You're going to say, it was good for me that I have been afflicted. For had I not been afflicted, I would have never known the power of God. You're crying right now because somebody slammed the door in your face. But later you're going to be dancing in front of the door and say, look what the Lord has done. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I have this sensation that I am prophesying to somebody about a situation that you're dealing with right now. And if you got any faith at all, you need to dry your tears and turn your mourning into dancing, for this is the day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice. We shall rejoice. That means I'm gonna make up my mind to be happy about this. Slap somebody saying, I'm gonna get happy about this. Mm. I'm going to get happy about something I've been crying about. I'm going to get happy about something I've been worried about because I realize that if God allowed me to go through this, it must be for my good. He, he wouldn't withhold any good thing. I don't know who I'm preaching to. Now then, we have the business the Philip coming down into Samaria. You remember Samaria? Samaria is that city that Jesus had planted a seed in through the woman at the well. When Jesus came to the woman at the well and had begun to minister to her, he had begun to plant a seed in Samaria. Jesus said, I must need go through Samaria. He planted a seed in that woman that renounced their religious dogma, said, your people don't know what they're doing. They're worshiping in the mountain, they know not what, but the our cometh and now is. Listen to that. Cometh and now is. In, in one regard, the, now, the, the hour is because I'm talking to you. He says, but my talking to you is not going to complete it. There's going to be somebody coming that's going to complete what I started. The hour cometh and now is that they that worship God oh, must worship him in spirit and in truth. I must warn you, I feel like preaching this morning. Mm. 
if you don't want to hear no preaching, you should just put up that little finger and get out of here right now. Because I'm trying to tell you that, that something that, 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 that you experienced in your isness is yet coming to pass. You shouted about it when you heard about it, but it's still coming to pass. The hour cometh and now is. There, there's going to be two things happen in your life. You're going to hear about it at one stage and enter into it at another stage. I'm talking to somebody. You've been shouting about the idea of being delivered, but you're about to really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the preacher came through and got you happy just talking about the idea. It's like what a commercial does when they show you a picture of food and you look at the picture of food and your salivary glands begin to salivate at the anticipation of food because your glands are stimulated by mental perception and, and it's commercialization to make you see an image. But I don't care how beautiful the image is, how opulent the decor, how nice the table is set, nobody can eat a picture of a steak. And for years you've been shouting over a picture of deliverance but the hour cometh and now he is they, that worship God must worship him in spirit and truth just if you got what I'm talking about I realize that went over maybe maybe 30% of the people in this room's head but if you got it just touch them and say it's coming it's coming it's coming mm, it's coming mm, you know, the breakthrough a, a breakthrough a breakout the deliverance is coming it's coming it's coming it's about to about to break loose it's, it's about to break loose in my life. Many of you, without knowing deep theology, you know it in your spirit. You have for a long time had a sensation that something was about to happen. Oppressed, perhaps depressed, if you please, a few even possessed. But even in the midst of all of the satanic influence, the reason that you didn't die and you didn't quit and you didn't faint is that you kept feeling like something is about to happen. And if, if I can hold out it, I'm going to get a breakthrough in a minute. I don't know who it is. It might be somebody sitting way back in the balcony up there. But you, you have a sensation that something is about to happen. The devil told you you ought to blow your brains out. And you, you got a pistol in your house, but you can't use it because you, you've been thinking in the back. No, no, I can't go out like this because I just got a promise. It hadn't produced in my life, but I got a promise that the, 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 the best is yet to come. So, so, so having done all to stand, I'm going to stand here I'm waiting on something but I don't even know what I'm waiting on does anybody know what it's like to be waiting on something and you don't even know exactly what it is you're waiting on but you're just sitting at the bus stop waiting on something I'm waiting on it I'm waiting on it I'm waiting on it I can't die because something is about to happen Philip slipped into, sit down, relax, I'm just talking to you, this is, this, we're just getting, we're just dating, we're going to get married in a minute, <laughs> mm, yeah, we're going to get married before I leave, and see, Philip is, is a, he slipped into the city of Samaria, no, no brigade, no, no military a brigade, no, no blowing of trumpets, he has slipped into Samaria, a man driven by his own personal persecutions into the destiny of God, this is how ministry works, see, Many of you sit in the pews and you see us when we come, but you don't know why we came. We don't know, you don't know that the force with which we preach is often eradicated by the opposition that drove us to you. You don't, you don't know that we went through hell to get to you. You think we're preaching with fire just because we want you delivered, but really it was the blast of the furnace that pushed us out, that made us have to come out here. <laughs> So Philip, uh, Philip went down to Samaria. Now let's talk a little bit about Samaria. You understand that there was paganism and ritualism uh, going on in the city. Jesus alludes to it in the Gospel of St. John when he paints a picture of this Samaritan woman who comes down at the well. Uh, she's had five husbands and, 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 and a, a, a situation that's going on in her life. She has an infusion of religion mixed with an infusion of perversion and it's all stirred up and tangled up together. And God used this woman uh, to say, come see a man. And, and they did come because of this woman for a while, but they slipped back into paganistic behavior. And Simon the sorcerer had taken over the city. Little 
little did Simon know that deliverance was coming. Simon thought he owned Samaria. He thought he had it up under control. He had his demons and his imps controlling the city of Samaria. Little did Simon know that there was a revolution that had started in somebody's basement, somebody's living room, had broken out in some inobvious, inept location. You know, God will start a fire in a trash can and burn down the whole house. It don't matter where you start. You can start in a little storefront shanty. It don't matter where you start, baby. It matters where you finish. God lit a fire in Philip's heart, and when he got down into Samaria, he started to preaching, and there was a change. That's why you need to honor great leadership like you're doing today. You need to go out of your way to honor great leadership because a real anointed man just just one <laughs> not not 20 not 30 not 40 just one if i had time oh god if i had time i'd show you that every mighty move of god that ever happened in the bible it never started with a committee it always started with one man one man would turn a city upside down when god got ready to create all of humanity he created one man when god got ready to create a woman he created one man and pulled the woman out of the man and pull the family out of the woman and pull the civilization out of the family because God always starts with one. When God gets ready to deliver the children of Israel, he uses one man named Moses who says go down there and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. When God gets ready to feed the Israelite people, he uses one man named Joseph and says if I can get Joseph out, Joseph will deliver everybody else out. When God gets ready to restore Jerusalem he uses one man named Nehemiah to bring about deliverance in the city. When God gets ready to prophesy his return, he uses one man, an eagle-eyed prophet named Isaiah. When God gets ready to let Jerusalem know his heart is broken, he uses one man named Jeremiah, the weeping prophet. He falls in sin for the women of mourning and let them take him a whale and slap somebody and tell them it only takes one good man. One can chase a thousand and two ten thousand. If you get one, it'll revolutionize your city. The devil is so afraid of one man that when he knows one man is coming, now, he'll send out all of his abortionists trying to kill every male child in the city. He's not after the masses, he's after one man. But he's willing to kill countless male children trying to find that one man because the devil knows that if you ever get loose, everything connected to you is going to get loose too. Slap somebody and tell them I'm I'm one of the ones. I'm one of the ones. That's why the devil's been fighting you all of your life because you're one of the ones. You're a jailhouse wrecker. You're a mountain mover. You're a giant killer. You're anointed to slay the enemy. And that's why the devil's been fighting you all of your life because the devil knew that if you ever got loose, he killed your brothers. He killed your friends. He killed your family. He killed your neighborhood. But he was looking for you. Touch somebody and say, but I'm still here. Then Philip went down to Samaria and he preached the gospel and he started casting out devils and the blind began to receive their sight and the lame began to walk. Chains began to fall off and there was great joy in the city. There is no joy like the kind of joy you have when you got a breakthrough in your life and you see deliverance. I know we are criticized for the way that we worship. I know it gives some trouble to, to, to some people because they think we are clamorous and boisterous and uncouth and unnecessary and they don't think that it, it is appropriate for intelligent people to, to act so flamboyant and so flagrant in their style of praising God. But I say to them, if you saw where God brought me from, you would pray even to if you knew how my house was on fire and the enemy was trying to destroy me and I barely escaped I mean I burned my socks leaping out of the window but I made it by the grace of God excuse me if I dance in my front yard and shout in my living room because I can still smell the smoke of what almost happened in my life and when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all uh, yes and there was great joy in the city. There was joy in the city. There was celebration. There ought to be joy in your city. Tell somebody, tell them I got joy in my city. 
I've, I've been in a drought. I've been in a dry place, but I got joy in my city. I'm starting to get a feeling that everything is going to be all right. It's, it may not be all right right now, but I'm starting to get a little optimistic that I will survive. Maybe it won't kill me. Maybe I'm coming out of this all right, and there's great joy. Don't deny me my joy, you player hater, you. you. Let me have this moment. I earned the right to have this joy. I ought to dance at least as long as I cried. I ought to celebrate as long as I suffered. How dare you sit there and roll your eyes and pass notes when you see me get a breakthrough. You weren't there when I was in hell's kitchen coming out with smoke in my cloud. Now, now, my brothers and sisters, here lies the contemporary problem that we face in our society that is reflected by what occurs in Samaria. They have great joy like we have great joy. They have great services like we have great services. They have great praise like we have great praise. They have great exuberance like we have great exuberance. But the real enemy rages on. Isn't it amazing how you can dance and shout and still go home to hell? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, if you think about it closely, most people stop at this point in the deliverance. They, they have great joy, and what they really did was switch addictions. They went from being addicted to drugs to being addicted to church. They go to church to get high. They go to church, and whoever can preach them the highest and get them the happiest, just numb me till I forget about the hell that I'm going through. And I just want to get a good feeling, titillate my senses and my emotions. And, and sometimes we're satisfied to have great joy but there's a new breed of Christian coming up we don't want to be entertained we want to be edified we don't want to be excited we want to be delivered there's a new breed of Christian who wakes up in the morning with their Bible in their hands and say devil this means war come hell or high water I'm going to huff and puff till I blow this thing down if I don't get it on the first Sunday I'm coming back on the second if I don't get it in the first month I'm coming back on the second month but I refuse to live with my daddy's devil operating in my life the devil is a lie I'm coming out These are the people who drag their children to the house of God. Single mamas with babies on each arm and one in her lap, pressing to the house of God, trying to raise up a child in the way that they should go, saying, I want you to grow up so that you don't have to go through what I went through to get a breakthrough. I want you to know who Jesus is. I want you to know what he's able to do. I want you to know that there is an anointing that destroys the yoke. These are often women who are struggling themselves, going through hell themselves, but dragging their children, dragging their sons and daughters into the house of God. These are men who finally woke up and recognized that having more women don't make you more man. And now they're bringing their sons into the house of God because they're hungry for deliverance. Now there is a problem. Sit down, let me talk to you about this problem. There is a problem in this text. Here is the dichotomy that exists in the text. The oxymoron that exists in the text is extrapolated in one phrase that Simon the sorcerer is still existing in spite of the joy of the saints. Simon the sorcerer has controlled the entire city. When you think about demonic influence, don't think in terms of demon possession because that is a minuscule understanding of satanic attack. It's not that Satan wants to possess one individual. Your vision is narrow if that's all you're thinking about. He really wants to control territories. He wants to set up dominion over regions. Says Simon the sorcerer controlled the region. Everything was up under his auspices or control. These are what the Bible calls principalities. They're magistrates, they're demonic magistrates who serve over entire regions or councils. And they say, I've got the whole city tied up. They say, you can't do that in Atlanta. Don't try that in Philadelphia. Don't try it in New York. These principalities set up dominions over regions. And you'll notice when you go into certain regions, there are certain spirits 
politics that are more prevalent in certain cities. Mm, yeah, certain cities are controlled by homosexual spirits and, and uh, other cities are controlled by gambling spirits. And certain cities are controlled by spirits of indifference. They have religious spirits and, and they set up regional dominions and territories and control. And you can't really be free until you come against that demonic influence over the region. Look at somebody and say, we got to get the whole thing out. Let me remind you that when Jesus came to the tomb of Gadarenes and found a man possessed with the devil and the Bible said that they got ready to cast the devils out. Listen to what the demons said. They said, suffer us not to leave the region. We don't mind leaving the man, but we don't want to leave the territory because we got something going on in this territory and we want to hold this territory down. And so they said, we don't care if you put us in pigs as long as we don't leave the region. Now let's go deeper. Can I preach this thing? What I want you to understand is that Satan has a highly organized operation against you. That demons are not disorganized and they are not chaotic. When they come against you, they come in order. They come, the Bible said when Jesus got ready to cast the demons out, said, what is your name? The demon said, we are legions. Legions means we are regimented. We are organized. We march together. You must, you, you must understand this, that when Satan marches, he marches in a spirit of unity. I would remind you that when they accused Jesus of casting out demons by the power of Beelzebub, he said, oh no, Satan has a kingdom and Satan's kingdom is not divided for a house divided against itself shall not stand. I would also remind you that from Genesis to Revelations, you will never see a demon fighting with another demon. You will never see a principality fighting with another principality. From Genesis to Revelations, you will never see a witch fighting against another witch. It's only only when you look at church folk that you see preachers fighting against preachers and churches fighting against churches and Baptists fighting against Methodists and Methodists fighting against principal it's because we don't understand order oh, oh, oh order we got to get some order in the house of God we got to get rid of every chaotic wild spirit that's out of control because disorder is a work of the enemy God is not the author of confusion let everything be done decently and in order. Such three people say order in the house, order in the house, order. Get your rebellious hips out. We got to have order in this house. Whether the house is a church or whether the house is a house you live in, there has to come a point that you tell little Junior, if you're going to stay in this house, you got to get yourself to get. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can I go deep? Not only is the enemy after regions, he's after houses. When I say the enemy's after houses, I don't mean that he's just after your address. He's after everything born out of your loins. When the enemy sends a curse, he either sends it to a city or he sends it to a house. The house of David, the house of Issachar, the house of the Johnsons, the house of the Jakeses, the house of the Longs, the house of the Wilsons. That's why you see certain spirits that run through certain houses if you will look at your family tree closely you will find that you are still fighting your grandmama's devil your mama's devil grandma got a divorce your mama got a divorce all of your sisters got a divorce and now your marriage is coming unglued it's a spirit slap somebody and tell them it's a spirit it's not about him having an affair. It's about a spirit that's come against your house. It's not about you making more money than him. It's a spirit that has come against your house. That's why you ought to be careful whose house you marry into. Because some of you married into some spirits. You was happy till you got in that family. Now all hell is breaking loose. Because you married into a curse that was on that house. Your children come up with something that you ain't never thought of doing before. But somebody in your husband's family knows what's going on. Because you tied your children into a system that you don't even understand. Now you got to deal with a Johnson demon, a Jackson demon, a Richardson demon. You don't even know how to minister to the child. Because ain't nobody in your house ever come up with no mess like this. But some kind of way you tied them into a 
God, Lord have mercy. Who am I preaching to in here today? I, I, I want to cite some examples so you can understand clearly. Rebecca was a trickster and a con artist. She was a racketeer. She was a deceitful woman. She lied and connived with her own husband, manipulating her own children. Her, her uncle Laban was a trickster, a con artist, a liar, and a whoremonger. Her son Jacob was a trickster and a supplanter and a con man and a rouseabout because when the demons get in the family it says suffer us not to leave the region I want to remind you of David dysfunctional from Jesse on down ostracized by his father David comes up yes he was anointed but he was dysfunctional he was a whoremonger he had a lust spirit he had a demon that he couldn't get rid of he came in through the rejection of his father and the enemy saw a door open it planted a seed in his life David had such a lust problem that when he was an old man they threw a young woman in the bed and when he didn't touch her they said the king is dead no wonder then that his son Absalom was deceitful and treacherous and Amnon raped his daughter Tamar and Solomon had so many strange women that he lost control of the kingdom because there was a spirit in the house oh I can't just spend time talking about Jacob and talking about David what is this mess going on in your house your daughter acting crazy coming up with stuff at 13 that you didn't run into until you were 25 but that spirit is getting desperate because you're getting in the house of God and the devil is saying if I don't get her quickly I'm afraid that the Holy Ghost is going it's going to run me out of town I don't know who I'm preaching to this morning but the Lord sent me into this city and I'm after a demon I'm not going to stop till I get it I'm going to preach till everything in here begins to shake I'm going to get it in the I'm going to get it slap somebody and tell them I gotta get rid of it and the Bible says that when Philip got down into Samaria he began to preach with such power and such deliverance that God got the stronghold and began to bring it down touch somebody and tell them it can be broken it will be broken it must be broken almost like the sound of a cannon exploding the sound of a pistol going on the Holy Ghost said enough is enough I'm gonna break every curse and every spell that's ever come against your house who am I preaching to this morning I came all the way from Dallas to tell somebody you've been shouting about something and while you've been shouting about it, you've been going through hell. Trouble on the right side. Trouble on the left side. Before you can get two steps forward, something knocks you four steps back. And you've had great joy, but you haven't had a breakthrough. But the Lord sent me to Atlanta to tell you that before this service is over, God is going to break the spell out of your life. I feel the anointing of God in this place. Slap three people and tell them it will be broken. It will be broken. It will be broken. It will be broken. This will not pass to my daughter. This will not pass to my son. This will not pass to my children. The devil is a lie. I declare right now in the name of Jesus, the spell is going to be broken. This spirit of poverty that has cursed my generations, I come against it now. In the name of Jesus, I was broke. My parents were broke. Their parents were broke. It's a good old spirit, but I'm going to cast it out. Somebody shake yourself loose. I'm a 
about to break it loose. Spirits of debt, spirits of hopelessness, spirits of despair, spirits of confusion, it will shake loose. Enough is enough. It's time for deliverance. Spirits of perversion, doing stuff in the middle of the night, don't even like what you're doing, but you can't stop it, and you can't break it, and the devil's been laughing, saying, I got her where I want her, I got him where I want him, he'll never get loose, but I came to serve notice on the enemy, I came with an eviction notice out of the word of God, say that I cast you out, I cast you out of every house, every circumstance, every situation, somebody holler, get out, get out, get out, lay hands on your daughter, lay hands on your son, and cast the devil out, I feel a breakthrough coming in this house, I warn every witch, you better get out of here right now, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me now, and I command every foul spirit in the name of Jesus, get out of this house, somebody shout it yeah. I want you to give God 60 seconds of a crazy praise right now. Enemies tried to curse you. People hated you when you were a child. Cursed by rape. Cursed by molestation. Cursed by child abuse. Cursed by absent fathers. Cursed by whorish mothers. I come against it in the name of Jesus. Shake somebody and say, you gotta get loose. You gotta get loose. You gotta get loose. Give your God a praise right now. Yes, 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 yes. I break every addiction, every addiction, every alcoholic spirit. It started as alcoholism. Now it's drugs. It's all in your house. Sex demons. Sexy spirits. Perverted spirits. Crazy spirits. Suicide spirits. Enough is enough. Today, in the name of Jesus, get somebody by the hand. Get them by the hand. Take them by the hand. Squeeze the hand. Squeeze it. Squeeze the hand. Squeeze the hand. This represents your family. This represents your church. This represents your business. This represents your money. This represents your sexuality. Tell them the spell. The spell is broken over your life. Pray them like your house is on fire. Pray them like you lost your mind.
wait a minute. Some of y'all still don't get it. I know it's Sunday morning. You got on your cute face and your nice hat. But when you get home, you got a devil to fight. You better kick off them heels. Pull that hat off your head and tell the devil the spell, the spell is broken right now. Right there. Right there. Right there. Sound yes. your hands and open your mouth and begin to give God an audible praise. Audible praise. Out of your mouth. Come on. 
come on, open your mouth. Open your mouth to your God. I can't hear y'all in the balcony. Open your mouth. Open your mouth in the balcony. In the choir stand. In the overflow. Let everything that has brought. I told you God's given me a word for your family and for your house. I believe we broke a seal on something in here this morning. By the time I get back in September, God's going to do something in your house you've been praying for for years and years and years. Get somebody by the hand, get somebody by the hand, all in the balcony, then the overflows everywhere there is a human being. Get them by the hand. You have no idea what people are dealing with in this room. All dressed up and smelling good, face painted, hair done going through hell in secret places. Somebody's got victory on the job, but you got hell in the house. You come to a wonderful church, but you left a hellish situation. It's the things that we don't talk about that's killing us. You know how your mama told you what goes on in this house stays in this house? Well, when it starts stinking bad enough, it can't stay in the house. It leaks out the window and runs out the door and it comes up in the principal's office and it shows up in the courthouse and the crack house and every other kind of house. Today we need a breakthrough. This is why we're honoring this man of God today. Because this is your Philip. You got a Philip right here. Come here, Bishop. You got a Philip hurled into his destiny, pushed by rejection into the purpose of God. And he's preached things in this place that stopped things that were about to happen in your life. And don't you ever let anybody make you feel bad about honoring your Philip. Ow! Because this is your spell breaker. You come in here all tied up. And God uses him. To destroy the elk that's in your life. Lift your hands, man of God. We anoint you today with fresh oil. The hand of the Lord God be upon you. Chase out every demon and every foul spirit. Ow! Break every curse and every bondage. For the Lord God is with you to deliver you whithersoever thou goest. And as I lay hands on you this day, every enemy that's risen against you shall be vanquished. I feel the anointing of God in this house. I feel the anointing of
Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, lift your hands. There's glory in here. Yes, yes, yes. just want a minute more of your time. Get those hands. Get those hands. No, join them with somebody next to you. I want you to, we got to come into agreement for our kids. We got to get our kids back, y'all. Our sons and our daughters. Some of them in prison. Some of them on drugs. They're dropping babies like falling popcorn. We got to get our kids back. We got to get them back. Flunking out of school. Giving up. They know the words to all the rap songs, but they haven't read a book in a year. It's a curse and it's got to be broken. Poverty spirits have got to be broken. It's got to be broken off of your kids. It starts with you. You're not pitiful. You're not defeated. You're not broke, you're not helpless, you're not dumb, and you're not stupid. It's a lie. Stop acting like it. Stop waiting on somebody to give you something. Ain't nobody gonna give you nothing. Ain't nobody gonna give you nothing because you're not helpless. Your spell is broken. Now you're gonna get your stuff. 
Now you're going to build your business. Now you're going to start your company. Now you're coming out of debt. Now you're going to buy your house. Now you're going to build up your generation. Now you're going to get yourself together. Now you're going to run for office. Now you're going to move into power. I want you to get one another by the hand. And in this anointing, I want you to start shouting out the names of your children and your grandchildren and your brothers and your sisters. I want you to just shout them out right now, right now. Shout it out. Shout it out. Shout out. Shout it out. Shout out your address. Shout out your address. Shout out the name of your business, the name of your company, the place you work. Shout it out. Shout it out. Shout it out. Shout. 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 Now, new birth, you have to realize at the time that I told Bishop Long that I would come, I didn't know that I would come on a Sunday and be back in a few weeks to minister to this issue in our families, but God knew it. I think that there's a reason that God had me come in on a Sunday morning and prepare you for what God is going to do in September. There's some things that I want to teach you that's going on with our men that the enemy doesn't have to curse our women. If he destroys our men, he'll break our women's hearts so bad that he doesn't have to destroy you. I didn't come here to sell books. That's not my purpose. I want you to have the book, but I didn't come here to sell books. The book is already number 10 on the New York Times bestsellers list. Here's my concern. I'm afraid that the world is gonna get the principles that God gave me for the church. And the church who won't read is gonna miss what God gave me for you. I want you over the next few weeks before I get here to get the jump on the rest of the people that are coming, to get this word in your heart and in your spirit. If you normally don't read, I don't care if you don't read but three pages a night, a chapter a week, I don't care if you put it in your bathroom, read it while you're sitting on the toilet, I don't care what you got to do. God gave me something for a year and a half. God's been talking to me about what's going on in our house. We got to stop these curses. It's killing us. It's killing us. It's killing us. Something has got to be done. Today is the down payment on a complete transformation in your life and in your spirit and in the life of your children. The Bible said you should know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You do perish for the lack of what you know. I want to share some things with you. I beg you. I plead with you. Don't let the world get these principles without the church getting them first. For the Bible said judgment must begin in the house of God. Our men are dying silently 10 to 15 years earlier than women. Curses are coming in because the enemy is after the seed of the woman. He's after your seed. He's after your sons, your husbands. Mary and Martha, thy brother shall rise again. God wants to bring restoration into your house. Every place I've shared this, marriages have come back together. Some estranged husbands came home. Mothers got breakthroughs with sons because nobody's ever told our women how to talk to men. Most of what you read about men are in your women's books and your women's magazines and your articles have been written by other women. But I'm gonna break the silence and there's gonna be a breakthrough 
there's going to be a breakthrough coming in your house. I believe God with you. I believe God with you for your children. I know what it is to be preaching the gospel and winning the world and the devil chasing my children down like rabbits and shooting them in the head. I had to stop preaching and rebuke the enemy and say, devil, you can't have my child. How? You don't know. You can't have my child. Now, wait a minute. You can't have my child. So I'm in the struggle with you. I understand what it is. I understand just when you're about to get there, all hell breaks loose in your house. But we're going to break these curses. You hear me? We're going to break them. Are you with me? Are you with me? Clap your hand if you're with me. Now, this is what I want. I, I'm over time, but this is Grandpa's day. This is Grandpa's day to preach to you. You had Daddy all the time. He, he called for his Daddy, so you only got Grandpa every now and then. I feel as though everybody in here got something different. If I ministered correctly, and I, and I did my best, if I, if I ministered correctly, spirits of poverty are broken. Spirits of poverty are broken. Secret spirits of perversion. Oh, I know you can't clap because you don't want to act like you know what I'm talking about, but you broken. This, 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 this thing that's been going on in your house between you and people you know you love, but sometimes you love people you can't get along with. Sometimes you love people you don't like. And it breaks your heart because your house is divided against itself. But today, we have broken that spell. When, when I come back, I'm going to start pouring into you a new language. A, a new language. Now that the spell, the spirit is broken, we got to get rid of the old way we communicated. Because if I don't go to the next step, that old spirit will come back in with seven more spirits. I've, I've got to teach you a new love language, a new understanding of communication, how to get what you want done without causing this spirit of confusion. We should be at the Tower of Pentecost, but most of our families are at the Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel is a place where people who are family don't understand each other. They're speaking to each other, but they're in different languages, and the disunity is causing our towers to fall. You must be a part of this. You must be a part of this. You must commit your leader to prayer and his wife and his family. I mean the real prayer. I'm not talking about, Lord, bless the pastor wherever he is. Bless his wife too, in Jesus' name, amen. I'm talking about real prayer because the enemy knows that you have a spell-breaking leadership. I don't think it's an accident that I'm here as a covering with this man of God who is a covering to you. And I believe with all of my heart, as much as you came just to purely bless him, and I understand that, I believe that you're going to track something back to your church and to your city and to your area that is going to destroy the yokes of the enemy in your city. I believe that. You're going to track it back. It's going to be on your feet when you walk out of here. And it's going uh, <laughs> to And it's going to turn some things around. Before I take my seat, this is what, the one thing that the enemy hates for us to do is to unify in prayer. Now, I'm going to tell you some strongholds have been broken in here. I mean real strongholds, real strongholds, real strongholds. When, when, when this service is over, there are some brothers that have to go home and delete some stuff out of your computer because you know you've been into some mess. Yeah, you, you got to get rid of it. There are some folks that's going to have to get rid of some numbers because you ain't going to be calling them no more. There's a breakthrough coming in the house. There's a breakthrough coming to the house. There are some folks, you haven't really been talking, you haven't been communicating. You and your spouse, you just do business together. You're roommates, you're business partners. 
but you're going to begin the laborious task of learning how to communicate positively and you're going to need some prayer you're going to need some prayer because some of you are starting to do things that you never saw anybody do you never saw a whole family and you're trying to have something that you never saw so in my last two or three minutes I want you without any reservation with total compassion because you have been touched and you know what the other person must be going through too to turn and throw your arms around another person and pray for whatever their spell was and whatever their struggle was right now all over the church turn and just throw your arms around them and pray for them right now right now now get up go to them now and pray in the Holy Ghost Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Give it to me. Pray. 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 Pray like it's you. Pray like it's your child. Pray like it's your situation. Pray. Pray. Oh!
We're going to stay in this same flow because God is still moving and you need to understand that he's moving and touching and awakening and reassuring at this moment. And the only thing I ask is at this moment, if you're not saved and you know this is your moment of election, that you would start moving forward. If you don't have a church home and you know that this is your church, I am your pastor, that you would start just from wherever you are, just start coming forward wherever you are. Everybody else is still worshiping, but wherever you are, 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 right now is your moment. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, wherever you are, wherever you are, come on up on the platform. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, keep worshiping, keep blessing the Lord. Come on, come on, God bless you, see you coming. See you coming, come, come, come. Come, 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 come on on up, come on up, come on up, come on up. Come, 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 come. Still worshiping, come on, still worshiping. Still blessing the Lord, still got your mouth open, blessing him. Out of your belly, out of your spirit. Hallelujah. 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 No, you don't understand. Hallelujah. 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 No, no, you don't understand. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come on, 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 come on. You don't understand, you don't understand, you don't understand. You don't know where I've been, you don't know where I'm coming out of right now. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, 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 come on. Come on, salvation. Come on, come on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come, 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 come. Come, hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come, 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 come. Hallelujah. Now come on, put your hands together real good like you know you bless God. Come on and bless him. Hallelujah. Come, come. Hallelujah. Right before I dismiss, I'm going to ask all the Father's House pastors, Brother Drake, just lead them upstairs so they'll know where to go. Just follow Elder Drake and uh, he'll just take you. I need to say this as I dismiss you. My daddy picked up on something that we've already just been talking about. Now, and we have not talked, and I need you to hear this. We had a hard time finding the date to put that conference here at this church. And then the date that came up is September 7th, which is the ninth month. That's a month of delivery. And seven means completion. He who has begun a good work in you shall complete it. I dare you to show up September 7th. I dare you to get this thing finished in us once and for all. God bless you and let the peace of God go with you. In the name of Jesus, thank you.